Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the next episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we are going all the way back to 5th edition. The set is fantastic. There's a lot of good cards in here. Mana Vault sitting at the top, Sylvan Library sitting at $30. Birds of Paradise, Meek Stone, tons of other awesome stuff. Uh, really, really excited to open this. And as always, we are going to go through this as if it is a draft pick. So we'll figure out what our pack one pick one would be. Uh, or at least we will do the best we can to do so. I am not the best drafter, but I will do the best I can. Uh, I also don't know where the rare is in this set, uh, so we'll see what we get. Hopefully we'll be able to tell which is the rare right off the bat, but we will go through every card and we start off here with a Havenwood Battleground. Uh, it's a land that comes into play tapped and it can tap for green mana. Uh, you can also tap it and sacrifice it for two green mana. I generally don't like things like this. I don't like that it enters the battlefield tapped, first of all. Uh, I also don't like that it's basically just a forest. But if you need it to, it's like a one-time shot thing. I'd rather have the repeated effect. That being said, there might be instances where you would play this in draft. I feel like if you're in just a really heavy green deck and you want to kind of skip ahead a turn uh, to, to play some big fatty or something like that, then there's definitely uses for this. But overall, a very unexciting card in my opinion. Uh, Wind Spirit is a 3-2 for 4 and a blue. It has flying. Uh, and it cannot be blocked by only one creature, so that has to at least be double blocked. It's it's basically Menace uh, for any newer players. That's sort of basically what this is. I do like this card. Uh, creatures were a little bit more underpowered during this time in the game, uh, and so... 3-2 uh, flyer for 5 is actually pretty good, uh, and to to say that it has to be blocked by 2 creatures means that a lot of times it's just going to be punching through for a bunch of extra damage, so uh, I really like that card as a first pick if we get there. Uh, Sarah Bestiary is an enchant creature for 2 white. Uh, during your upkeep you have to pay 2 white or bury uh, the bestiary, which just means put it in your graveyard. Uh, the enchanted creature cannot attack, block, or play an ability that includes tapping in its activation cost. Uh, so this is like a glorified pacifism. Uh, it's a little bit harder to cast at two white instead of one and a white, uh, but it does get rid of activated abilities. The only other thing that I don't like about this, though, is that you do have to always pay, pay that upkeep cost. Uh, now, what you can do is just play this early, and then if you have a big bomb later, uh, that will outweigh whatever the creature is that you played this on. Uh, eventually, you just don't have to pay the cost, and you get rid of this, but your creature will be able to take care of it. Uh, that being said, it's like fine. Uh, I feel like it's probably decent enough that you would play this, uh, but that upkeep cost is pretty backbreaking after a while because especially if you're li missing land drops or something like that, like that just puts you in a very bad position. Uh, I like the wind spirit more at this point. Uh, okay, well, we know what our rare is. Uh, Wrath of God is our rare. So it's a sorcery for two and two white and it says bury all creatures, destroy all creatures for anybody uh, not not familiar with the berry keyword uh obviously wrath effects are perfectly fine they're awesome they're super super powerful uh in draft they're not quite as good uh if i'm going to be honest just because uh the reality is you're going to be trying to play a bunch of creatures they're going to be trying to play a bunch of creatures uh hopefully your creatures outpower theirs and so ideally you kind of don't want to blow up your own most of the time uh, that being said, if you're drafting sort of a control style deck or your creature package isn't great, uh, then you would certainly want a card like this to be able to blow up the other side of the board and have minimal damage on your end. Uh, so this is a good card. I think honestly though, I'd still take the Wind Spirit, uh, but that's actually a really fun pull. Uh, I don't know how much Wrath of God is. Uh, it's like a $9 card. Not bad. Uh, Goblin Hero. Uh, this card's hilarious. It's a 2-2 vanilla Goblin uh, for two and a red. It was actually a rare in a starter set, which I think is hilarious, but it's really bad. <laughs> this card is absolute garbage. Uh, not worth playing, in my opinion. It's worse than a grizzly bear, so just really, really not good. Uh, Scathe Zombies, a very similar creature, two and a black for a 2-2 vanilla creature. Again, not very exciting. The only thing you get is that zombie synergy. Same with Goblin Hero. You do get the, uh, the goblin synergies there, but in general, not very good. Uh, boomerang instant speed uh, two blue return target permanent to its owner's hand this is actually quite good in just a blue tempo deck uh, it is any permanent so that's that's worth noting it's not just like a creature card or something like that you can hit enchantments you can hit lands you can hit artifacts you can hit literally anything <coughs> excuse me uh, so for that reason I really really like this card uh, not more than the wind spirit just because this is a little bit more of a the wind spirits a little bit more proactive uh, Boomerang is much more reactive and just sort of tempo based, uh, but still definitely even in the same deck. I would love those cards uh, Imposing vi 
visage visage i i i'm very bad with pronunciation enchant creature one red uh the enchanted creature cannot be blocked by only one creature this is basically menace on an enchant creature uh i don't really like this card i think it's pretty underwhelming for one red it's very low cost though uh so it's probably something that like if i just didn't have any more playables i would run this uh but in general really don't like it the art's hilarious but that's about it <laughs> uh homerid warrior a three three for four and a blue uh, you can pay one and it cannot be the target of spells or effects until the end of the turn uh, and it does not untap during your next untap phase and then you also have to tap it uh, i don't really like this card this is a lot of an investment for a three three uh, i'd rather honestly it just be a three three for like three or something and not have it just be a vanilla creature i feel like that would be better uh, the fact though it it does give itself hexproof which is kind of cool uh, technically it's Shroud, I guess, because it's not even just uh, the opponent, but I, I don't really like this. It's a little bit too slow, in my opinion. Uh, shield Wall, one and a white for an instant. All creatures you control get plus zero, plus two uh, until end of turn. Obviously a defensive card. I tend not to like defensive uh, combat tricks very often, uh, especially in draft, because, again, you're, you're really wanting to be much more proactive, uh, dealing more damage as quickly as you can. Uh, and so cards like this, while definitely can lead to not necessarily a blowout, but I mean, if your creatures are looking like, looking like they're going to trade off, uh, and then you kind of swing in with this, you can actually just annihilate the opposing board. That seems decent, but you're already in a losing position at that point, and a card like this is very situational, so I'm not a fan. Uh, Nature's Lore, a sorcery for one and a green. Search your library for a forest card, put that card into play, and shuffle your library afterwards. Uh, this is great ramp. Uh, this is, because it comes into play and it's not tapped, it's like you can use it immediately. So on turn two, you play this, you play hopefully like a one-drop elf or something like that off of this forest. That's just a great, great turn two. Uh, so I do love this card. Um, again, in a ramp deck, it would be fantastic, but I like the more proactive wind spirit for now. Uh, mountain Goat is a 1-1 one, one for one red. Uh, summon Goat uh, it has Mountain Walk, so it can't be uh, blocked if the defending player controls any mountains. Uh, it's basically just unblockable. Uh, it's like a okay one drop. It's not very good. Uh, it's silly at best. The artwork is hilarious. Uh, Grape Shot Catapult. A 2-3 for 4 artifact creature. Uh, you can tap it and it deals 1 damage to target creature with flying. Uh, this card is definitely something that I would be interested in running. Uh, I like the Wind Spirit more. It's a little bit better in terms of dealing some extra damage. But uh, this can block on the ground and then deal some damage to creatures in the air, which seems fantastic. Uh, I really like that. Uh, it's similar to if you played like Return to Ravnica. Uh, there was a card... Oh, what was the name of that card? Uh, it was like a 0-4 that just blocked for days and then would ping the opponent. It was great, and this is kind of similar. Uh, oh, and then uh, last two cards here. Counter Spell uh, is an instant speed 2 blue counter target spell. Very straightforward, kind of the classic counter spell. Uh, I really like this card. Again, I would love it in a Wind Spirit deck, but I think I would still want the Wind Spirit first. Uh, but this is definitely a powerful card, one that you would be interested in picking up. Uh, Brass Claw Orcs. A 3-2 for 2 and a red. It cannot be assigned to block any creature with power of 2 or greater. Uh, this has a little bit more of a drawback than the Wind Spirit, though uh, it is cheaper to play uh, for the same power and toughness. Uh, it doesn't have flying, um, and it obviously has the blocking conditional, uh, which is like fine. It's, it's whatever. Obviously, you want to be more like swinging in with red decks, so kind of makes sense, but I think... Uh, pretty easily, I would take the Wind Spirit. Wrath of God is definitely a very, very powerful card, though. Uh, so there are instances where I would definitely see taking that as well. Uh, but based on just pack one, pick one, I think I would take the Wind Spirit. Let me know in the comment section if you disagree with me. But I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm getting out of here. I'll see you guys in the next Crack a Pack episode.